you're ready for this. Okay, uh, Douglas, yeah, we'll... see, let's let's do this. Let's do this. So, let's go. so help me introduce yourself to my audience. Hello there. My name is um, Douglas Amadiche. Um, from Zimbabwe. Um, I do multiple things. One of them is I'm a clinical um, information officer. I'm a chief informatician. Uh, I do broadcasting myself. I'm a father. I'm an entrepreneur. I like to do everything I can. God blessed us with two hands. So I'm all about trying to maximize my abilities at all times. And that's it. That's me. Good, good, good. Thank you, Douglas. So your your LinkedIn profile says that you are the number one voice for human and uh, digital transformation across Absolutely. health and social care. Mm. Now, what does that mean? Explain it to my, my audience. Well, basically it means when we deploy technology that's supposed to transform a service, Mm. Um, it's going from a state that is inferior to one that should be superior. It should be a, a state that has problems to one that has less problems or different types of problems. That's what we generally mean by change of transformation. Okay, we were trying to improve a process. Yeah. And the NHS, yeah. just like every other industry from retail to engineering to aviation, they've gone through iteration to try and improve the, the customer service experience to, to, to streamline its operations. So that's transformation. So when you could do transformation from a technological perspective, yeah. but the biggest yeah. transformation is humanistic. That's why I always like to talk about human and digital transformation together because change, as we, we know, is the hardest thing for anyone to, to overcome. The slightest change, we, we have issues. Yeah. And COVID yeah. proved that in bulk for most people to, to suddenly work from home. A lot of people struggled. A lot of people didn't understand what the whole, the whole concept was and the impact it would have on their own home life. So change is something that's inevitable, but it's something that humans struggle to reconcile. Yeah. So I like to openly talk about digital change, transformation from a humanistic as well as a technological perspective. Great, great, great. I mean, uh, looking at your, your studio, you have uh, transformed your home into a studio, you know? Yeah. Well, it's a stroke, a stroke studio, stroke... Um, Nursery, I've got a little one at home, a three-year-old. So yeah, you see artifacts for the kids here. Yeah. Kids the world the place. But yeah, essentially it's creating an environment that's conducive for you to do anything. And even before COVID, yeah. the, the, the philosophy behind that is if you want to achieve anything in life, you've got to create the right conditions to do that. Mm-hmm. If you're athletes, you need to create the right conditions in your kitchen. Yeah. So you do it well with all the fatty foods, all the kind of stuff that doesn't promote fitness. Yeah. Same way, if you want to be a writer, you've got to create that space for you to be able to write effectively. Yeah. So I do a lot of media, do a lot of broadcasting. So you have to create that environment so that you, you're down there or wherever the environment is, all your things are ready for you to go. So just push record. You're good exactly, to go. exactly, exactly. So why do you advocate the use of uh, videos? Well... I was cleaning up my garage the other day, yeah? The okay. best, best way to describe that is like this. I was clearing my garage the other day. I had my nephew's nieces around my house. Yeah. And I saw some, some of my daughter's old VHS tapes, Barney, mm. and all these other type of uh, characters, right? And they didn't know what the VHS was. They didn't know. They didn't know what the device was, and they alone know what device is used to play that thing. Yeah. So there's one thing to know that's a VHS tape. Mm-hmm. It's another thing to know that VHS tape goes into VHSS, VHS recorder. Yeah. The same way with, with disc, compact disc. They can see a compact disc. They can, what is that? Where does that go? You can look at floppy disks. That's a disc. Where does that go? Look at cassette tapes. It's a tape. Where does that go? So if you're into um, communication, yeah. you've got to, you've got to, you've got to um, be able to use all the necessary technologies to communicate what you want to communicate and you have to be living on a rock or underneath a rock to not realize that video is the number one form of medium for communication. Yep. You can communicate instantaneously. You could be omnipresent. Like this conversation, if you're streaming it live, 
will go instantaneously around the globe faster, faster, or at least to the speed of light, not faster than speed of light. That's impossible. But yeah. As fast as you can, close to the speed of light instantaneously, everybody around the world can listen and hear your message. So communication is, is key um, coming from a people that have not been the best or historically been able to tell their own narrative. Yeah. It's important to use technology to ensure that when people are telling stories about us or that there are stories and it's coming directly from the source or they'll write stories about us because we're not up to speed in technology. Technology is a great leveler in enabling people to, to punch above their weight. Mm. So I'm a big advocate for video, 100%. Mm, mm. I mean, I before I started this, uh, uh, I got into video a lot a few years ago when I started uh, learning through YouTube. Okay, uh, like I told you when we uh, initially talked. I had a stroke and I was indoors all the time and I had to start learning things in anew. So, and video was very instrumental for me to do that, do that. And uh, I, I, I understand the impact of video. So when, when you do your, your thing, how much do your audience, the people you are trying to serve, how well, how well do they take it? Well, the, the whole audience, it's about communication. It's yes. about giving people choice. And um, when we in the media um, business create content, I think that's your referring to content, it could be video, it could be audio, but essentially, it's about being making sure information is accessible out of choice for anyone who wants to consume it. So sometimes my audience will want, might want it as a podcast. Yeah. So they can just listen to it. The good thing is with this video, you can decide to just keep the audio. You can decide yep. to upload the audio and video. You can decide mm-hmm. to slice and dice it on Twitter. You can yeah. do lots of stuff with it. So it's about giving people choice to enable, to enable them to consume whatever you want to say in a way that's best suits them. That's what this is about. It's about being able to do that. And if you're, if you've got a message that you want to say, you know, um, and there's, there's technology on your phone, you've got a camera, you can yeah. record to where your narrative is going to be cemented for history, if, particularly if you upload it. So I, I'm yeah. a big advocate for everybody to tell their stories. If you can create your own platform and you can drive traffic to your own tra- platform for people to watch your videos, go ahead. People no longer are, particularly in the developed develop Western world, yeah. consuming video based upon what's, pop, what's pushed out by terrestrial television. You know, long gone are the days when the bulk of people wait for seven o'clock to watch, or six o'clock to watch news, wait to 10 o'clock to watch news. You watch on demand, you watch you, and you watch on your own terms. When you want to know news, you go, go online, you watch the news. So if you want motivation, you've got to go online and find somebody that's talking, um, inspirational stuff when you want not sitting waiting and structuring your day around a yeah. broadcast schedule that's why video is so so important you have to be up to speed the technology the entry points to to get in the game has never been cheaper the number yeah. one influencer on 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 for video across tiktok is african you know, the most watched person, I forgot his name. He's, he's a yeah. silent, silent um, yeah. reaction to videos, yeah? Yeah. He is African. And he started off with technology that is inferior to what most people in the Western world have in their phone, right? And he's the number one watch person on the globe, planet Earth. So there's, there's no excuses, you know? Um, you don't have to wait for anybody. Just press record and share your share your narrative to the world and let, let the market decide whether or not you're good enough. Don't let your family members t- talk rubbish in your ear saying, hey, you, <laughs> you want to say, hey, you're rubbish and you're this. Not about them. It's not about your friends. It's not about the family. Let the market decide. People who don't know you, who hear mm. your message, let them decide 
you know, your value in terms of video content. So I'm a big, like I said, I'm a big believer that we we have a responsibility, those of us with voices. Yeah. We have something to say. We have to say it, not just pass it down to our children. You know, we have to surpass that, you know, tell other people's children the philosophy of the village runs, runs deep. You know, it takes a village to raise, raise a child. So, you know, I'm, these, these messages are not just for my own children. Yeah. Uh, my children don't listen to, to them. Maybe your children don't listen to them. They don't, <laughs> you know, and who, who cares as long as it's moving, you know? So that, that's, my, um, that's my philosophy on life. Yeah. Yeah. See, I, 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 I see this and I, I wonder how sustainable it is. This, this is what, what I mean. All the time I hear that we live in a digital world. Okay, I get it. You get it. I'm a big bookworm, okay? I subscribe to Audible, okay? I also subscribe to Netflix and Amazon Prime, even though I hardly <laughs> use them. Uh, I listen to several podcasts, okay? Meet people on social media. And now with the this uh uh what's it called uh internet 3.0 and the virtual world okay so the question is how I mean we only have 24 hours in an, in a, in every day with all these things flowing how sustainable is it is because hey what what can we do? Hmm. It's, some, it's something like that, that. I mean, and 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 it affects for me. It affects hmm. young young people. For for example, my daughters. Okay, 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 okay. You've only got twenty four hours yes. in a day. <laughs> you think that's too much or too little? Hmm. Do you think 24 hours in a day is too much? No, it, it, I mean, it's just, it's just right. If you know how right. to use so, it. Right. Fine. It's like, okay. If you know how it's to just use right. it. So, so if you compare, if you compare the activities that you would have to, to, to traditionally do. Yes. In order for you to get your message out on video. Yes. For digital. Yeah. Right. How long would that take? You'd be talking about using a video camera that still uses tape. Mm. You need to send it to somebody that will be able to edit that tape. Yeah. 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 That mm -hmm. will take weeks, if not months, before you can produce anything. Yeah. Let yeah. alone distribute that around the world. And you will not be able to distribute that simultaneously. You'll find your message can be drip, drip fed over a period of days, weeks, months, years before people get it. You're talking about now, whatever I'm doing right now, as I'm talking to you, I could be, in fact, in fact, I can do a demonstration. In fact, I could be going live on, on TikTok as I'm talking to you, yeah. sharing this onto your podcast, sharing this onto a different platform. So in fact, making best use of your time is, can never be, has never been easier, never been better. The challenge that we have, the challenge that we have is if you're a consumer or you're a contributor. Okay. That's Good. what I think you're, okay. you're alluding to. Good. If you're busy contributing, you're busy working, you're busy mining, you're busy planting seeds. So if you're spending all day doing that, that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. You're being honest. I agree. If you're spending all day consuming, that's a different problem. That's a different problem. <laughs> that's a different problem. I want you to talk about. Because, yes, you are a contributor. I am too. Although I'm also a consumer. Okay, but with the amount of content, okay, there's content everywhere in every kind of space. Mm. 
many people do not know how to dice the time. Well, okay. again, again, everybody, right, is first and foremost born in accordance to when the divine said you should be born. Mm. Like my grandparents could not navigate the world that we live in now. It's too much yes. tech. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They, can handle, they can handle little bits here and there. Might be able to order something on Amazon. That's it. That's the most they will go. But the kids, if you watch them now, a three-year-old now, a four-year-old now, they see what they're doing with their fingers on your phone, how fast the things are moving, how they <laughs> navigate it. You're just comparing your inability to harvest and harness the technology based upon the time you were born. But these kids who are born into that, that is their world. You're saying that world you're in, I can't thrive in it. You, so you need to go through an educational piece. That's the change of transformation that you're saying is too fast. Because change has got changed now, it's gone exponential. It's almost vertical, the change. Mm. So before it's linear like this, slowly, slowly, as we know from record players to CD, it was very linear. You know, you could buy vinyl. Yeah. And that vinyl will keep you going for a lifetime. You can inherit vinyl. Now, when things went to MP3, they're saying, ah, oh, you've got no physical copy of your, your music. Yeah. There's no physical copy of it. So who owns it? You know, so th- legally there were issues that needed to be reconciled and agreed in- with the courts and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But you know, the physical record that's still there, you know, if you have it, it's yours. You know, so because technology moves so, so fast, sometimes it moves faster than legislation. Yeah. So there are, there are, there are going to be a, a time when there might be um, more controls put in place to limit the amount of, of information that's flowing at particular times. Yeah. There might be that. There might be more age appropriate content and real enforceable um, laws to put in place so that content cannot be shared at specific times. But at the moment, we're at that stage where everything is like the wild, wild west in terms of technology. Yeah. We just discovered oil, gold or oil. Data is the new oil. We just discovered it and everyone wants to bathe in it. Everybody wants to bask in it. More, 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 more. Those people who are, who are clever are using that opportunity to make billions, make millions. Because out of confusion comes the, the, the opportunity to create industry. So you've got to ask yourself, where can you leverage? Where can, this is the time for, I think it's one of your questions as well, for Africa. Africa yeah. has the youngest population in any continent. Yes. Yeah. And a big divide between the, the old and the young. Usually the old, the senior citizens are the ones with the money and the political power. Yes. But no middle-aged people with wisdom because mm. most of them are in the diaspora. They've left for Canada, States, <laughs> UK, Australia. You understand? Leaving yeah. the kids to, to manage on their own. Yeah? Yeah. But technology is at a great level. It will allow them to communicate and engage in ways that their fathers could never communicate, their mothers could never communicate. There's going to be, communi- there's going to be industries born out of that where uh, some people are still holding on to the minerals under the ground scenario as the only way that they know that they can be wealthy. Mm. But we know from a people that when you discover these minerals, yeah, your country is going to be target. You got yeah. to, your, your country is going to be targeted and you'd wish that you never had any minerals. They're, yeah. they're Africa, they're, they're real, there are people in Africa right now who are sitting on cobalt, nickel, gold, diamonds, but they're poor. Yep. And, and, and they just wish that those minerals were not under their ground because those minerals were not under their ground. They will not have these Western influences come into their country and causing havoc. They'll be left alone. They'll be left alone. And when you're left alone, you can educate yourself. Yeah. You can educate yourself. And education is, is the central tenement for wealth generation. Yeah, just concentrate on educating yourself. But then these other minerals can be a distraction. So I'm just saying that's the roundabout way of saying technology is a great way of leveling up. There's, there's, there's movie industries, 
There's entertainment industries that we can control and dominate by controlling our own narrative. There's stories that have yet to be told from great African authors. We shouldn't be in 2022 and having children. And <laughs> in 2022, we shouldn't be waiting for the next movie on Netflix. What for? When you when, when you got technology now where you can have movies from your own ho- homeland coming in instantaneously. Why are we waiting for Netflix? Black people should be waiting for the next Black Panther. What for? It wasn't written by a Black person. Do you see what I mean? It's a Black character, but yeah, it wasn't written by a Black person. There are so many stories in Africa, real deep philosophical, the best stories ever came out and resistance came out from Africa. From the Bible and so forth. Ancient Sanskrit came out from Africa. So why are we worried about Hollywood? <laughs> if you're Nigerian, if you're Nigerian, I'll big you up because Nigeria, Nollywood, done great stuff. Nollywood could continue on. Indian people don't worry about what Hollywood is doing because they're too busy with their Bollywood. Yeah. China don't really care what Hollywood is doing. They do they do because they're their own industry. You see, so I think technology will allow Africa to to um, be able to do a lot more things creativity in terms of um, creativity, music, the arts, video, documentaries, all of those things. I shouldn't have to wait for a reporter from the BBC to tell me about what's taking place in my own country. When I know I've got somebody on the ground who can just point to the camera and give me the rolling narrative there and there. I don't have to so, wait. So, so the question is this. Why are we waiting? Some, some people are not waiting. Many people are not waiting. From where I'm at, we have no, this conversation. No, are we waiting? B- b- based, on, b- based on how much the, the tech has grown, we having a large young population, right? Mm. Hold on, hold on. Mm. Then we should have been in in the forefront. No, no. Oh, 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 let, me, let, let me finish. Let, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Your phone. Let me finish. Your phone. No. Okay. No. Let no. me finish. You answer. You you have each other. See, we should have been at the forefront of developing all those things you just talked about. Talked about. So the question. The question is this. See, why? Are we not there? Okay. See, the, the, this is just like the question I asked someone on LinkedIn earlier today, okay? Mm. Because she brings up very interesting things, very important, thing, in, important things. But she just, she will just narrate those things and as if we can do this, okay? And I ask a question. Mm. I said at first before I ask, I said, let us sit down and dissect all these things you say. Okay. And then when we do that, that dissect that, that dissections, now we find out why we are not doing it. Because okay. it's good, it's good to say all these fantastic things. Okay. 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 Cool. See, like you, a process person i'm i'm also a process person so i know that the 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 when you get in deep into the process you find out the challenges and then and then you also find the opportunities absolutely absolutely um just just to underscore what you're saying there so so i apologize if i was um Interrupting, I was trying to get a point that you were oh, going come to raise. On. Come on, so 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 what? What the issue that I'm, I'm trying to lay bare here is this: Yeah, who's we? Okay, I'm, I'm talking about Africans. 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 Okay. okay, Africans. Okay, and descendants of slaves as well. Africans. Oh, come, come on. Uh, no, see, no, no, no. It's important. No, we're talking about systemic systems. So let's talk about systems. So it's a, when we're talking about systems, we talk about what drives the system. Okay, and what's okay. dependent on the system. Right. So it's important just so that we understand because when we're talking about 
we. Yeah. If we're talking about black people, for example. Okay. Talking about, and we're talking about African people and okay. descendants of Africans, all those things, fine. So, okay. so, 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 so we've got context. It's important to have context. So we have breadth, right? Okay. So with breadth, then let's break down the systems within okay. those systems, right? In, in a way that's manageable. In a way that's manageable. Zimbabwe was, for example, independent in 1980. Yeah. 1980. Independent in 1980. It was the last African country to win its independence through civil armed struggle. Yeah. Yeah, the last one. Some countries have been independent from the 50s, 40s. Okay? So because of that, and we were colonization affected every African country differently. So when we are saying globally, why are we not moving? We've got to take a look at each country as an individual status mm-hmm. and see what, what, how each, each individual country are doing. Like I was bigging up Nigerians with their um, Nollywood. Yeah. Hollywood has been the, has been the stable of my me watching African films, even though I'm not even though I'm not Nigerian, because he had to thrive in. It still has a thriving um, 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 a movie industry. Yeah, you understand because is, is, it, sec- is, is it second largest in terms yeah, of yeah. Produ- production? And, yeah, yeah, exactly. And and it's one of the first countries to be independent in Africa. Yeah, yeah? Cl- close to it. Zimbabwe, yes. Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe being the last country to be independent. Okay, the very last. Right. So if you're talking about age and time to do things, everyone can everyone has to be able to undo the way they're colonized. And people people colonized in different ways. We've met they were left in a different state upon um, independence. Some people were left, like my, my, my colleagues from Mozambique, in a state where they had no industry at all. Because the um the colonizers there left, the Portuguese left, and after decimating everything there. So they have to start from scratch and talk about educating themselves, even our South African brothers. Denied education for such a long time. Yeah. So you got to ask, how long does it take to educate a human being to adulthood? Well, zero to adulthood, 18 years at least. Yeah. Then that, ch- that person who's educated has to be able to educate his children. I see what I'm saying to you. Yeah. And then if throughout the whole process, they have to be able to create an environment whereby technology is accessible to them. So um, I've got right now, if I show you this, this, this is this is my new laptop, yeah? Yeah. This is a new laptop, right? Not everybody can afford the latest technology. Okay. Not, not, not everybody's country has access to 4G, 5G, Wi-Fi connectivity. Yeah. So it's about it's, it's about leveling up. And the good thing about um being part of the diaspora is we have the ability to support our brothers and sisters back home by sending back technology that we think is obsolete, mm. but for them, it's still advanced enough. Yeah, And then we have to create the right environment for them to be educated in knowing how to use those things. Because governments, unfortunately, they're still very much, those, one, those countries that are mineral rich are still focusing a lot heavily on the minerals and the ground, then the uplift of education in their people. So until we, until we get to the stage where the young are more educated, Yes. and have access to technology, then we can talk about, I, I see a lot of passion in these young people. Uh, all the, I see that all the time, their eyes light up, they want to use it. But when you go home, you've got no electricity. You know, you cannot justify having your phone on at home to practice doing anything. Yeah. You know, so we have to help them out. I think it's, it's a collective effort. I, 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 I do agree with you, okay? I agree with you about all this, okay? Okay. Uh, we African in diaspora have a lot of things to contribute. Okay, we have a lot of things to contribute. And for me, education is the most important tool that the government can contribute. Okay, because if the pop- the population is educated, then they will, and if the economic economic policies are right, the population will create all the opportunities. Absolutely. Okay. So that's 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 there. Good. Cool. So 
Douglas. So knowing the challenges for many young Africans in Africa, okay, and the many, many opportunities in the digital world, okay, your world. So what is what is your advice to young Africans who want to contribute their little quarter to the development of themselves and their communities? Um, I think personal development is the most important thing you could ever do. You need to develop yourself, yeah. recognize your, your strengths, your weaknesses, and keep maximizing your, your talents. Yeah. Uh, it's very important that you have something that you can use your hands. You know, God gave you two hands. You know, you, you have to be able to do something like a trade. You need you need some backup. The, um, the recession and COVID and all these things has taught us that those people who can leverage on their talents can always survive. Yeah. Yeah, you might not do what you want to do, but the only people that are allowed to do what they want to do are the elderly and babies. <laughs> you, know, you have to do what you need to do. So therefore, develop skills that you know you can leverage at any given time. If you might not want to do it, like plumbing, being an electrician, you know, even doing hairdressing. These are things that you might think, oh, it's beneath me. But having those skills, you know, that might be able to give you a supplementary income when things get tough and, and hard. Think about the, the country that you're in. What skills do they need? And go and get those skills. If you're in the UK, cybersecurity is, is a massive industry. Informatics is a massive industry. You know, think about what skills that are needed and, and make sure you have those skills. Um, also, network. Your network is your net worth. You know, um, really focus on... Sorry, I've got somebody coming on my on my door, so... No, come on. I'm excited. So, um, yeah... Think, really think strategically, you know, it's, it, you've got to be very, very wise in this in this day and age. The days yeah. are gone where you could be a one-trick pony, mm. you know. Um, one-trick ponies don't survive. Yeah. You know, you, you've got to have multiple, multiple skills and continue on your personal development. Like, for example, like I say, it's for myself. My passion, my skills in video has allowed me to pivot at any given time a new career, a new industry, a new business model, because I, I can do something else. So when you're applying for a job and you know there's a short, acute shortage for a particular vacancy, ask yourself, what will set you apart from your competitor? If you're in a classroom, if you're in like doing your O-levels and you still got your classmates, you got to look at your classmates as competition. Mm. Because when you go for a job, your classmate now is your competitor. <laughs> so yes, you're laughing and joking, but when you both applying for that job, they become a competitor. So what, what is going to differentiate you from your colleague? What is it? We call it X factor. What is your X factor? What is something that you do and only you can do that? You know, if you look at someone's looking for a banking opportunity, but you can do video as well as banking, the perspective I have is say, oh, that gives us an extra option with this person. Mm. You know, always think about what is the value add, added that you can bring to the market and develop those skills. Don't think it's immaterial. There are a lot of, a lot of people even in the UK here who bury their degrees under the carpet. They could be a security guard, but have a degree in philosophy. They could be, they could be um, a nurse, but have a, a degree in law. But do you know how many nurses now are going through tribunal? under investigation that you could be helping them with your degree in law. You could start your own practice. You know, there's always, once you've got something additional, it gives you this uniqueness and it, it reduces the amount of people that have the same skill set. Mm. And that's what I will say to anyone, whether you're in the diaspora or whether you're in Africa, you know, you still have to make those hands work. If you have no hands, your feet must work. You must be able to do something else. Multi-talented, multifaceted individuals. And it will help you when you're older, of dementia and all that kind of stuff. If you know you can do lots of different things. If you're just one thing, that's the one thing you can do. If that one thing is gone, you're lost. You're lost. That's true. That's true. 
Thank you very much. So, so having said all this, what's your vision for Africa in the next uh, 20, 30 years? My vision is, is, is based and wrapped around hope. I would hope for Africa to wake up, the sleeping giant to wake up. I would hope that Africans unite and be proud of their cultural heritage and also embrace um, new ideas, new ways of doing things and get rid of culture that is there for culture's sake. <laughs> and I'll give you an example of that. I'll give you an example of that. Culture for culture's sake. When the royal family typically travel to a developed country, they jump off, come off the plane, they have the red carpet, correct? Yeah? Mm -hmm. the red carpet, correct? Then you see the natives dancing half naked. Yeah, with drum. But when our African leaders come here, we don't get the same treatment from the British. They greeted their people with suits and ties. If you get red carpet, yes. In, in the UK, they have traditional attire, dancing around a maypole, dancing around a tree. They do that here. Stonehenge, they do that here. Yeah. But they don't yeah. show you that part of their culture. They show you, we're here for business. Mm. So I, I think there's a, there's, a, there's a time and place for, for, for these type of ritualistic behavior. Um, I think we <laughs> embrace um, science, teach our children to... Uh, be critical thinkers, to think independently, trust the science, embrace probability based upon mathematical fact, opposed to supernatural entities coming into intervene. <laughs> you know, you know why, that why I'm laughing so much? You uh, know why I'm laughing so much? Why is that? Okay. You said we should embrace a culture. Mm -hmm. And then you started saying okay yes we should embrace a culture but then certain cultures need to, we need to get rid of <laughs> see i'm laughing because i'm laughing because africa being so diverse okay very very diverse more than any other continent okay to deter determine which culture each each group of people keep, which culture they need to get rid of, is going to be a big challenge. Yeah, yeah. No, what, what <laughs> I mean by, let, let me clarify what I meant by that. Okay, yeah? okay. Is to teach our children. Yeah. To appraise. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't mean get rid of. Okay. I mean, appraise. Okay. The praise based upon um, critical thinking, mm. and this is where this is where this will undo this paradigm that we have, actually have here, where yeah. the young are, are considered too young to be president because you're 35 or 40, because you've got somebody in your house that's 80 years of age, 88 years of age, 90 years of age, yeah, and you can't be wise at 40. You can't be wise at 45, yeah. You can't, you cannot lead a country, African country at that age. When in Europe, in Canada, you've got people there at that age ruling a developed country, but we can't do that. You know, this is what, this is, goes back to our, our central point. What can the young do? The young need to be able to take a look at some of those teachings and, and, and apply it in the right context. Okay. I'm not saying get rid of. Okay. It's, about, it's about being able to, if you're, if you're a parent and you don't teach your children how to think, yeah, you no, no, not saying. not what to think, but how yeah. to think. How to think. I agree with you. How yeah. to think. Yeah. They're supposed to be embracing traditions that they actually understand and value at the time. Yeah, they're not supposed to be doing things just because this is how it's always been done around here. Okay. But don't really subscribe to it, and if they don't see any benefits, or like for example, it's no point in saying, "Oh, oh, this person's unsuccessful." Because somebody done witchcraft on that person, <laughs> yeah? or, 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 or you want to get investors to from Europe to go, to come and mine for gold at, at that valley, 
Because some spiritual witch doctor you paid in US told you that if you dig there, there's going to be minerals. Yeah. I'm, talking, I'm talking about being able to critically appraise because culture, for all cultures, not African yeah. cultures, are not picking on anyone. All cultures are set to control a people. Yeah? Culture serves nothing but the culture itself. And if you're talking about Nigeria, Ghana, Zimbabwe, any of these African countries, I'd have also ask you, who controls that culture? You won't know who controls that culture. You're all, follow, you're all following blindly as if there's somebody who's telling us, actually, mm-mm, you don't do that. You do this. <laughs> because it's, it's now self-serving. The system is now gone, gone symbiotic. Right, it's running itself. Mm. This is why when we talk about, say, for example, the council culture, yeah, mm. where these young people now are cancelling things that they don't like, yeah, you're cancelled, right? So my question, <laughs> to, my question again, it's culture now. It's, 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 it's culture of the day, right? The council culture. Yeah, they even call it council culture, right? Yeah, right. So, how do you uncouncil yourself? <laughs> Who do you go to to uncouncil yourself? Oh, also, who do you go to? There's no answer. There's no <laughs> such body. But the, but the, 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 the community can say you're cancelled. Yeah. But there's no one to say you're uncancelled. Because there's no <laughs> such body exists. It's like your village. You're, you're, you're in your village. And in your village, um, you were told, okay, you can't marry that girl because she's from the wrong tribe. Yeah? You shouldn't marry her. She's from the wrong tribe from you. And but you love her, so you follow your culture. You don't marry her. You end up being a woman that you don't love to appease a culture, right? Yeah. And so you so you're not only mistreating a woman that you don't love, the child that you're going to bring into the world you don't truly love because you're pining for somebody else. Ask yourself how many people have not travelled outside the village because they don't want to upset their culture. Yeah. Have not have, have not taken on work because ah, I can't work on this particular day because this day is sacred. Okay, you got no job then, you start then. Ask yourself time and time again, where when you're embracing culture, it has to be able to serve you, to protect you, to enable you to thrive. For when it for when it's now stopping you. Yeah. See, now you got a problem. D- now, Douglas, you, now you got a problem. Douglas, see, all these things you just talked about, I buy it, okay? In fact, uh, I was born in my village, okay? And I left the, the village at age five, went to Western Nigeria, but we usually travel back home every summer. Okay, we spend at least a month. And that's when the in my village, there are so many traditional festivals that happen then. So we are all always involved every year. Okay. So see, I love the culture, the tradition, the I mean, I grew up that's with good. my grandparents, my grandmother, my even yeah. my great grandfather, one of my great grandfather. So I'm very into my culture, okay? Mm -hmm. But just like you said, we don't hold on to culture for culture's sake, okay? Mm -hmm. This is is a very important thing we need to talk about some other time, okay? Because Mm -hmm. many, many people talk about holding on to several things that some... let's say African in general, that we do, okay, as a people, things that haven't helped us to move forward, okay? And it's, it's something very important, okay? So uh, unfortunately, we can talk about it today, okay? Well, thank so, you very much so, for so that. Some, 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 sometime, maybe we come, out, we come again to, together and we talk about all those things. But, yeah, yeah. If you if you want me back, if you oh, yeah. want me back, we oh, can yeah. talk we'll, about that. We'll, we'll, do think, that. we'll do that. I think I think it's important, and and and, and I stand squarely by what you said. It has yeah. to just culture is there to to serve you. It should serve you to prosper, to protect you, to guide you, 
if it's holding you back, it's stopping investment in your country, if it's making you um, present yourself as, as, as somebody that cannot be trusted, as somebody that is not intelligent, you know, you can turn on your culture. For me, I would, I would ban, I would ban every African <laughs> leader right now and, and anyone from the Caribbean, if the royal family or anybody wants to come and do business with you, you need to be meet and greet in a suit and tie. In a suit and tie, <laughs> don't be having dancing na- around naked and half naked, your women are dancing through flames, you know what I mean? Wild animals, none of that. You, you <laughs> greet them as, as they expect to be greeted to do business, to do wow. business, to do business. That way, that way, that way, when you go to China, after state banquet, they will show you traditional dancing. Yeah. Yeah. But not the first thing. No, first impressions last. The first thing. And that is the image that's broadcast across the world. Yeah. Then we complain that we are treated like second class citizens. Where the first image people say, oh, this, the royal family, prince, blah, 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 is going to see, blah, blah, blah. And they see, uh, the first thing they see is, well, 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 well. <laughs> That's what they see. That's what they need to show on TV. And then we complain that we're being treated, we're not getting respect. People don't think that we're intellectuals. I'll yeah. take you straight to a university. Let's talk. Let's have this conversation in that university. You yeah. meet our brilliant minds. In fact, I'll get my brilliant minds to pick you up from the airport. My most intelligent people will pick you up from the airport. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Not bringing flamethrowers and, and traditional dancers before you even talk business. No, yeah. that's the yeah. wrong thing. See, th- those things should be for after dinner, you know? After dinner, after yeah. dinner. Yeah, after yeah. Dinner, when, when, when you talk business, <laughs> sign the check. This check has been signed. Yeah. You don't sign the check, you don't see our women. You don't see our women. You sign the check, oh. give us the money, and then, then, then we can have, then we can play. You don't yeah. want to play before you've signed any check. Suit and tie. Nobody leaves a room to the check signed. <laughs> then we, then we party. <laughs> Douglas, Douglas, thank you very much for being here. To, for being here. Thank you. No so All good. right. So good. Take care. Have a good evening. Bye. Take care. Yeah. Bye.